Uh, now Andre Minigun is up 1-0. Zictomini chose... Can you guess what map? Zerkbreak. <laughs> That's right. Daybreak is the choice of the battlefield for game number two. We will see Minigun once again face up against Zictomini. Let's go ahead and introduce our players. Starting in the top right, we have Chad Jones from Team Complexity. The blue Protoss player trying to train really hard. He's training in the Complexity Academy. Minigun's a really cool guy. Really chill. And his name is just chill. Like, when yeah. you think of really chill guys, you think of, like, Chad. Hey, man. Let's and, go to Chad Jones' and, place. And, like, Bruce. Those guys sound chill. Let's go to Chad Jones' place, man. <laughs> just hang out, you know? And then you find out there is no Chad. In the bottom left, we have from Team Western Wolves, Zikto Mini, the Green Zerg, the current WCS UK champion. Uh, Zikto Mini is... Ben actually signed up for all four qualifiers, I believe. And he's, he's had some pretty decent runs in, in, in a couple of them, but has been exiting out uh, before the, the rounds get really intense. You know, I would say like the, the quarterfinals are where it gets really super like hard. You know, you have like all the Koreans, you have like really good foreigners enter. And I think uh, Zikdomini, if, if he's able to bypass Minigun, I think he can make a pretty good run if he pieces afterwards. I just, I just want to say, I have faith in him. I believe in miracles, Andre. I do. Finish your sentence. I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to say so anything. You're so mean. Gosh. I was gonna say something really, really mean. <laughs> and then I realized. Uh, no. Uh, no. Nope. Andre, I, I believe in miracles. You know why? Because you became a good caster. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. Yeah. I do. And uh, obviously things. But that wasn't a miracle. That was hard work, bro. <laughs> No, Andre. It was definitely a miracle. Why are you so mean now? <laughs> I'm just teasing. That was actually the meanest thing you could have said to me. <laughs> you can see that minigun just denying Zikdomini. Zikdomini just wishes this probe would disappear. And uh, it's just, you know, a very annoying thing. But Daybreak's kind of been so, like, figured out at this point. Yeah. People are, are so comfortable. Players like Rhett just ignore, trying to take their natural. Says, I'm just going to go for the third. You know, screw this. I'm not going to even try to contest you. Ferdinand, that's like me saying, I believe in miracles <laughs> because you are relevant in the scene. <laughs> it's true. It's How true. mean is that? It, it is. That's exactly what I was saying. But it's hard it. work. You can't even say that. <laughs> Luck is what happens when opportunity meets preparation. Sup. Didn't I tell you that? No, you did not. Oh. You most certainly didn't. I definitely told that to someone in this office. I'm pretty sure it was you. But, uh, uh, you know, I've known that <laughs> quote since, I think... I heard that. I heard ninth that or tenth quote grade from Liquid Noni actually too. Ninth or tenth grade, I followed by that. Oh well, Andre, you know what? You also work really hard, which is really true. And uh, you know what? Actually, all of us are working very hard for season four. Uh, you know, all of us are we're, we're contacting players to get all their feedback. We really want to improve different ways. We get, yeah. We're inviting four players. If you haven't heard, we're inviting MMA, Violet, DRG, and Tasia. These are got two Zergs, two Terrans who are dominating the StarCraft II competitive scene. And uh, they, we, they deserve their invites. We're inviting them based off their performance all across leagues for the past year. And I'm just really excited to just get Season 4 started. It's September 12th. If you haven't had your Season Pass, get it now while you can for 20% discount. For $4 cheaper. Imagine all the stuff you can do for 4 bucks, Andre. You can get one gallon of gas in California. Maybe. Not <laughs> depends even. On, uh, depends on which gas station you go to. If you go to the really cheap one, you can get a, a gallon of gas. Just one. It's which if you same. drive in the bear truck, gets you about 7 miles. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Andre, are you, are you salty about my previous comment? Uh, I'm concentrating on the game, and I'm a little bit salty. <laughs> Not going to lie. All right, Andre, update us about what's going on in the game. Anything uh, cool happening? Nothing of what's, substance. What's developing? Minigun hasn't really chosen a tech yet, okay. so th I'm just uh, well, keeping he, an eye on him. Yes, he is doing a little bit of pressure, but this is fake four-gate pressure. I like this type of style, but it comes a little bit too early for it to be um, taken seriously. Like, this just doesn't exist at... Seven minutes in. Uh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, and uh, so so what kind of styles do you like on Daybreak? We've seen a, a huge revitalization to Stargate play. We've seen a lot of, you know, the standard robo-based play. What kind of styles would you like to see out of Minigun? What's your favorite kind of PvZ to watch on Daybreak? If you have a favorite p kind of PvZ. 
God, there's so many bad styles. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's actually what I'm thinking of right now. Thinking about all those. Like, well, I don't like this, and I don't like yeah, this. Yeah, because you know what? Honestly, it's just like ZVZ. The Daybreak has turned into a, a map where there's just a lot of sit and wait for something to happen. I think mm. that's why. Uh, I mean, the most the best example of that is going to be Rhett versus MC at uh, NASL Season Three Finals. That's right. So the third, fourth place match. Oh my gosh! It was literally you just, just sat back, there, make carriers, make, make mothership, make void rays, and then engage and see what happens. And it's because Daybreak is such a defensive map in and of itself. I mean, yeah. it's actually very difficult to do any damage. A lot of the builds that were really, really powerful, the Roach Hydra builds, are useless now. They, they just don't work nearly as effective because people realize, hey, I just get my sentry count up well enough. I can defend all of that. So I really feel like, as you said, Daybreak is a map that's figured out so much. And because of the distance, there's not really that much room for a lot of creativity. And uh, a lot a lot of the times we just have very macro passive games. Yeah, and uh, I think that's why Zygdomi is going to go ahead and take a fourth base before the 10-minute mark, realizing Minigun's playing you know, pretty greedy as well with this third. Not the greediest where we see six and a half minutes expansion, mm. but still at a reasonable time. And that's kind of the, the state of PVZ. You can see Zyktomini is already starting to, you know, just heck up really freely, getting Fetzers out really early. And, uh, you know, some Zerks feel like they have the cue to take Hive really early as well, which some, some people are kind of really mixed on that. Because if you go for Hive really quick, sure, you can get out those important upgrades and tech units. But at the same time, you won't have that many. Um, and so a lot of people try to like dump spines, and it's always like a rush. Do I get spines in time? Do I have enough units to hold off inevitable 14-minute huge three-base push with Colossus? Uh, and, and that's kind of like the, where Protoss Berserk kind of starts at like the 12 to 14-minute mark, Andre. So. And that's kind of uh, what people have been complaining about. But at the same time, I think there's a lot of micro and decision-making involved. That's why I like to think. Yeah. No, I, I That's just my opinion. I agree. Um, but for, for now, Minigun is, both these players are just sitting back, relaxing. So what are we going to expect? We're going to expect Broodlords. Uh, maybe a Hive timing. Maybe a Hive timing. But I think by that time, I mean, Spinecrawler should be actually set up in time. Uh, you should have Corruptors. I really feel like there's no Hive timing on this map even. Gosh. Really? No, the, there's, there's lots of uh, Hive timings if... Uh, no, I've seen MC take a lot of high timings on this map. It's just, if you can take control of the center and force action at the third, Broodlords often are forced to like morph in like between the third and the fourth base, and it's kind of an awkward spot because stalkers can blink mm -hmm. up. I, I think it depends on how the early game pans out, but in this case, complete passivity. If we look at the resources lost tab, there's just almost nothing lost between the two players, Andre. It's just a very, very sit-back game, which... You know, Minigun's trying to go for Harass, and War Prism Harass is the future of PvZ. In fact, it's the future of PvX. Anything to do with the, the Protoss future. Or maybe in the War current, Prism. man. I mean, That's War true. Prisms have become so popular. The Hatchery will maybe go down. Maybe not. I'm not sure. But Infestor is, of course, <laughs> over here to actually defend a little bit. Oh, now, nice. finally, Zyktomini is going to uh, get units across the field, but... Honestly, that's just that's just minerals that he's trading. It's not anything of substance. In the back, Minigun has a tiny little force. But the fact of the matter is, Zikta Mini has no units out, it feels like. Army tab shows very, very small army counts for each of these players. Just Infestors aren't able to actually clear up all of this. Uh, I, I think, again, Minigun will just collapse back on four bases yet again. And we're going to see him push out probably when a mothership is made. A mothership and 200 mm. energy, just like last game. Yeah, a lot of purchasers are so game. scared at actually pushing out against any Zerg just because... Oh, I'm scared against pushing out against any Zerg Yeah, the, well. the power of Broodlord, Infester, Corruptor, it's just so substantially big. But when, you, when you're when you this passive, you get 96 drones out of Zygdomenu. Five base yeah. pretty comfortably, only threatening the top left expansion. Meaning it's moving up to the top left as well. Uh, but realistically, I mean, Zyktomini, he can he doesn't even really need that base at the moment. He's still in the process of trying to buy time. In fact, the Hatchery is serving a purpose, putting the Protoss army in a spot where it's like, yeah, I'm just going to back off from here. That's good enough kind of thing. And this, mm -hmm. is, this, is, this is honestly just both 
both players just flexing their muscles in a way. Uh, it just seems like no yeah. no one's really actually committing to anything. Well, Minigun is just keeping his opponent honest. Really, there is no time to actually take that base in the top left-hand corner. You can't actually tech to Broodlords, rely mm. on Festers this much, this point in the game, and then take your fifth base. So he's basically like, okay, you can't actually take that, Zicto Mini. I know you can't take that. You're just making me push out. There is no way that you can actually deal with my army yet before Broodlords. Uh, it's just mm. they're they're playing the do you know what you're doing type of game because Zicto Mini, if that goes up and Minigun doesn't push out, Zicto Mini has a free base. So that's that's all that really is. I think if anything, Minigun has the ability to take the bottom right hand corner over his opponent, seeing it as yeah. if he oh. if he actually defends properly. But what that's prison about drop it. in the main as well? He's he has t uh, an immortal and a couple of zealots also Ooh. to accompany it. Kind of a neat little thing because immortals can snipe tech really quickly, but. Minigun, of course, is uh, just warping in mass zealot. Oh, taking care of this plus two carapace upgrade would be nice. If the zealots can kind of stop arguing with each other and start focusing on stuff, but instead, Minigun gets surrounded. Now, Minigun also, during this entire time, moves to the top left to snipe another hatchery. So, Minigun trying to really contain his opponents to four base, and I guess his philosophy is as long as he can keep my opponent on even bases, I'm in, I'm in good shape. That's absolutely right. Another War Prism coming into the main over here. This is going to uh, more substantial damage. Uh, as you can see, the Ze Zealots are still alive and pounding away at everything that Zictimini has. It's really unfortunate Zictimini actually morphed all of his Broodlords, so he doesn't Ooh. actually have anything to nice. defend against this Warp Prism. Gets the plus two Carapace as well. These are all setting up small advantages for Minigun, the upcoming inevitable fight. Andre, it's just, uh, it's at this point, there's they're just both building up. Building up the tension, Andre, because you know, they're going to have such stacked armies. Look at it, 12 Brutalers, 12 Infestors already out onto the field with more Corruptors coming out. And it's just going to be this giant clash. You know, do I get the, the Fungal off on the army and to lock the Mothership? Do I avoid the Vortex? Do I get the Archon Toilet or the Blink? And all these different questions come to play as soon as they decide to do anything. Minigun's, gonna su Minigun's also going to suicide some sentries and trade out army. Um, is there is there ever a phase in ZVP or BBZ where you or I guess on the Protoss side where you trade out probes as well? Yeah, there absolutely is, uh, but that doesn't happen until way later because you need to actually establish your bank, mm -hmm. and that's actually really really tough to do. But there's definitely a time where mm -hmm. it's like, well, I only have this max and that's it. And when that happens and you know you really don't have the capability to getting another big 200 200 army, you make sure that that synergy with that mothership is going to be good. And that's when you're actually going to do it. Nice storm drop. Oof. Taking care of some of those drones and uh, making an Archon. But in the end, this is all just, again, uh, just light, light harassment. And Minigun trying to get advantages. If he can snipe things like tech, uh, get the drone count low, hurt the ability for Zerg to remax. Andre, I've been saying this for a long time with uh, one of uh, one of our technical directors. Actually, if you use Storm Drops really well, you can really hurt the ability for Zerg to remax because Storm also kills Larva in one shot. That's absolutely right. You never right. know. What if you kill all the Larva all of a sudden and Zerg's like, "Well, I'm going to remax," and he has nothing. No, that's really powerful. Actually, yeah. look at how much Larva is over here uh, yeah. at the main. That's what 26 Larva. That's quite substantial. So if you actually have some sort of big drop and then follow that up with another push, the remax is going to be considerably weaker. And that's actually really, really valuable, especially if you're on something like only a Gateway Army or only like Gateway Immortal Colossus, because the remax is normally the one that kills you. You know, you have some sort of thing that actually reduces your power, which is, um, you know, Fungal's killing sentries or killing Colossus, and then they rely on that remax to actually kill you. Obviously, that doesn't exist anymore. But in this position, we're going to see the big battle actually happen pretty soon. Minigun still, I don't think, has the uh, full Ooh. energy mothership. Nope. No, he doesn't, but he's got three War Prisms on the field, all trying to manage them at the same time. He's got a couple high Templars in it. He's going to drop it immediately, feed back some of the Infestors. Nice play, but he's also going to warp into the natural, I think, as long as he can kind of summon his army, trying to see if he can square up against the army as well. Love multiple War Prisms throughout the game. Yes. Uh, one thing Zictomini has a lot of is minerals. And, you know, he always could use more spawn cards. Remember Rotterdam showing me this one game where Phoenix had just, I swear, he had 400 spine cards on the map. And it was, it was to the point where it was lagging the entire game. And you can see that Zyklamini does have a good wall, but he's losing a lot of it. He's out of position. In fact, all of his Brewers are trying to go back and deal with the Zealots back in the main, but he's going to give up the center spot. And the Infestors are really there to lock the Bungles down, but they don't really have support beyond that. Yeah. 
Huh. Minigun doing everything perfect. Now, Zicta Mini is just making that perfect, all, you know, super strong army. What he needs to actually kill his opponent is to have the best engagement possible. He loses like 20 supply max. But with two, two vortexes, I don't know how he's going to do that. He needs to go ahead and Neural Parasite. One of those, that, well, oh. that, that mothership, but it doesn't seem too probable in this case. Still hasn't used the Vortexes, though. No, he's not. In fact, uh, several of his army got chopped off from uh, the main army, so Minigun does lose that supply. That's just incredible amount of Broodlords, and that's just so intimidating for Minigun to face. The mothership's getting very weak as well. Uh, another storm really to back off, but in the in the end, I think Minigun got what he wanted. Dealt with the spine wall, killed mm -hmm. the center expansion, slowed the gas intake of Zerg. He's been denying the top left expansion nonstop, as you can see. Zictomy is just saturating; it doesn't have his gas up there yet. And uh, you know, he's also done a lot of considerable damage in the main. So I think Minigun still feels like he's in a pretty good position, but man, is he being passive? Yeah, I mean, he needs to throw down those those vortexes for sure, and he needs to be so careful. This is a very very difficult uh, area to actually push forward to, of course, with uh, the power of that Dilmaga Tower actually being able to make all the right decisions. Here we go, though. Fungal Growths might go down. There they go. And this is not going to look good. Uh, High Templar is going up in front, trying to feed back Ooh. as much as possible. There's oh, the Vortex. Oh, he gets a big chunk of the Broodlords, but there's still a lot remaining. A second Vortex catches the remainder Beautiful. of the Broodlords. And now sending in the Archons into the front line. Zictomini oh, doing the calculations, no. dropping Infested Terrence. Oh, he's sending the Stalkers in as well. Minigun's going hard in the paint. We're about to find out what happens. The Archons completely destroying the Broodlords on the bottom, but the Norms in the, in the, the upper Vortex are still doing lots of damage. In the end, Minigun's losing a a lot of supply, and uh, Minigun may have jumped the no, gun. Minigun. Uh, Did he do the right thing or not? There's still a lot of Broodlords. And I think uh, Minigun's okay because the Infestor count. He needs to blink up and start taking out some of those Broodlords. There it is. Um, oh, wow. Never mind. There's a pretty big Infestor count, so he's okay. Oh, my goodness. The Stalkers wow. are now locked down. The Broods are doing massive damage, and the Stalkers are pushed back. The Colossus can't outrun the Broodlings and the Swarm of Zerg in full force, really trying to just push back Minigun with non-stop units. Well done. Very well Oof. done by Zicto Mini. I can't believe that happened. A lot of the time, I mean, it's all positional. You can see how he spread out all the Broodlords, and for some reason, the Archons just were not able to do enough damage. There's the big blink taking out every single one of those Broodlords, but it comes down to it. He just doesn't have enough stuff on the ground to actually deal with the Zerglings, even. Another mm. Colossus is going to pop in here. He needs to defend the mm. Colossus if he wants to actually defend against this efficiently. Infested Terrans will pop down. Infested Terrans are actually the way you kill every single form of gateway units. Now, Roaches are going to be remade. But do they even have blue reconstitution? Yeah, they uh, do. Their upgrades are pretty poor. They got plus two carapace. They have plus one missile oh, attacks. Oh, Infestors, what are you doing? Infestors are away in a position. Don't lose your Infestors. Oh, Don't lose your Infestors. Oh, my goodness. The Stalkers oh, playing God. four, taking out four, five Infestors as well. And now Zictomini, all of a sudden, when he looked like he was in a pretty decent position to reinforce the, the new Brutalors that are morphing in, at least protect the stall for time. I mean, the Infestors were all out of energy, but still, you don't want to be giving away that much gas. Zictomini, whoo, wants to keep this game close. He does. And you know what? The Roach Remax is really interesting. I tend to think that Roach Remax has actually put too much supply into an area that doesn't really protect your Brutalords as well. I think Infestors are obviously the best. But other than that, Zerglings are more than okay because all your gas is going to be going towards Broodlords and Infestors. They're just the better combination. We're going to see if it's going to be enough mm. because keep in mind, um, you know, Minigun isn't max, but that Mothership's going to help so substantially much, Frodo. Yeah, that Mothership is just uh, making it really hard. Zikami now bringing his Overseers into oh the mix, God. but does he have a direct answer to the Mothership itself? He's got real no anti-air other than the Festers, and now the Stalkers blink forward, taking out the Brewers immediately. There's no energy for Vortex. The Mothership just trying to get in position. The Brewers doing massive amount of damage because the Overseer is able to give a vision. As a result, Minigun losing a lot of his front supply. The Archons dropping another blink forward, and now the Brewers are remaining are getting picked off, but the Zerg and reinforcements are pushing the Stalker back, and the Stalker count is dwindling. Minigun still protecting this expansion, but now has to retreat, and all of a sudden, Zictomini pushing back the tug of war to his side advantage, and now Zictomini's got the Stalkers on the run. The Colossus drops as well. Madness is describing this game. Minigun di dips below triple digits supply, and his center expansion is now destroyed. 
This is, uh, this is a crazy game, but in the end, Zipto Mini still has to be really cautious. He doesn't really have that many strong units. He's got a couple Infestors and a, and a bro single Broodlord, but he's pretty much got Roaches, and that's still a very, very weak amount of supply. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, you know, Minigun hasn't really been focused on getting anything of substance oh, for himself. Losing those goodness. Infestors is quite substantial. Let's look at the units tab real Yikes. quick. Okay, so he is getting Broodlords on the way three in total, but the fact of the matter is he lost a lot in gas. And actually, this Remax is going to be considerably weaker. I'm sorry I didn't see the top left-hand corner, but that gets taken out. So Minigun trading bases very nicely. But both these players down to looks like a single base mining. Minigun will take his center expansion yet again, but the fact of the matter is the units plus tab. Both of them are very equal, I would actually say. Dare I say it, I think Minigun is slow... No. I think Zikta Mini is ahead. You're going to say... <laughs> I was going to say... You're going to say Minigun's the one ahead? Yes. And wow. I have reasons for that. It might sound really, really weird, but I think Minigun has the better ability to actually get to that better 200-200 army over his opponent. Yes, there exists a lot of gas out on the map still, but the fact of the matter is you don't have a lot of substance, and he has to remake a lot of gas. Uh, infestors, Broodlords, etc., Whereas one Colossus will shut down a lot of the Zerging pressure. Uh, even Storms will shut down a lot of the pressure. And mm. that, in conjunction with the Vortexes, I really feel like Minigun has a good shot at this. He just needs to play this absolutely perfectly. And uh, what are you doing, Zicto Mini? What are you doing, Minigun? <laughs> well, uh, I got <laughs> news for you, in the middle of the map. Zipta Mini only gets stronger from this point on because he didn't really have that, even that good upgrades on all of his units. Another Vortex on the Broodlords, and the Corrupt is taking massive damage as Zergen's getting all stormed. And uh, this, again, this army was really dependent upon the Broodlords' army. You can see the Corruptors do clean up the Mothership, but uh, as soon as the Vortex clears, will Minigun be able to snipe the Broodlords in time? He needs to blink forward and get it. He gets the blink before the Infestors can keep the Stalkers locked down. The Infestors are not dropping as well. Zikdomini keeps donating, needs to open up the Infestor Charity Drive or close it down, rather, because he's giving away way too much for free. And now Zikta Mini pulling the drones. And Minigun looks like he may have broken his opponent here. Yep, Minigun has the advantage, Fredo. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh my goodness. Minigun cleans up the center expansion. Zikta Mini's economy is in shambles. Doesn't really have a good source of income anywhere. Now starting to pull a lot more, all of his units, but doesn't really have anything to supplant a huge attack. Minigun now being pushed back yet again, but he still has a pretty reasonable stalker count. Now forced to blink backwards, but Zikdomini, I mean, he's lost his Broodlords and Infestors time and time again, and this time he really can't remake it. Yes, and that's why we see only Roaches, Infestors. Zikdomini is only on one base, the top left-hand corner. Oh, actually, he has this base in the top middle, so that will help quite substantially. Excuse me. And that's going to really put Minigun in a position where he has to actually do something. Now, he can't keep trading like this. He's actually losing a ton of units, but the upgrade's really coming into effect, I think. Zikto Mini, oh, uh, nope, he's on 3-2. Never mind. So both these players are just trading, but Blink Stalkers, of course, very powerful. And uh, he will be taking out a lot of these roaches, but overstepping his bounds ever so slightly. I really feel like there should have been an earlier uh. blink back because stalkers just get better with a huge mass amount. Uh, at this point, I think Minigun is going to go for his big Whoa. attack, I would say. Big attack by Poland probes, Andre. This is this is it. Minigun says, I got to make this work. He's got his probes. He's got sentries. This is an attack that should be happening at, at, at 20 minutes ago with this kind of unit composition. But now pulling his probes and his Zells, his Zerglings, uh, also adding good way to funnel off so that the Roaches can do full DPS Minigun, running out of options. The remainder of his Stalkers now dropping. And uh, you can wow. see that it is it. GG. Zik Domini wins a 34-minute slugfest. Both players are beaten and bruised, I but guess now I'm the wrong, series is huh? tied. <laughs> no, that, that big attack was definitely really important for Minigun, obviously taking out all of those infestors. But I think the big thing, Minigun didn't remax in anything of substance. Just Stalkers is not going to be efficient enough. But I have to say, Zikto Mini, taking that middle center expansion, I think that was the key thing. If he didn't have that, he would be so far behind. And that's not something a lot of players would do, Frodan. Um, Zikto Mini, I think, really showing his skills here and showing what he has to do. He knows what he has to do to win, and he executes then, even though it's super, super hard to do. 
And after uh, about an hour of gameplay, we've seen that the series is tied. We'll find yeah. out what happens, who will advance to the round of 64. Guys, this is the last qualifier, your last chance for NHL Season 4. Both players really want it. We'll find out who advances after a quick break.